Captain Midnight. The adventures of Superman. Faster than a speeding bullet. More powerful than a locomotive. Able to leap tall buildings at a single bound. Look, up in the sky, it's a bird. It's a plane. It's Superman. Yes, it's Superman who today finds it. Stop me if you've heard this one before. Superman is boring. It's a sentence thrown around so much online that it seems to have become the default opinion. He may have been the first superhero and still beloved worldwide, but the conventional wisdom surrounding the Man of Steel today is that he isn't cool like Batman, relatable like Spider-Man, and, as the internet loves to point out, he's way overpowered. I understand where people are coming from, but honestly, I disagree. If anything, I think it's this conventional wisdom that's deeply boring. At his best, which sadly I think he rarely is on screen, Superman isn't just some bland stick in the mud, he's a lot more than that. Because he, more than almost any DC or Marvel character I can think of, isn't afraid to embrace what makes the superhero genre so uncynical, fun, and unique. So what I'm going to try to do in this video is not just make the case for Superman, but also give a few ideas for how to make a big screen version that's faithful to what I see as the best, most enduring aspects of the character. Come on and meet my pal, Clark Kent, the star of Superman. As a reporter, I like to keep up on all the exciting news being made these days. Are you a fan of the MCU Steve Rogers? If you're a regular viewer of this channel, I'm gonna guess you probably are. Earnest and badass at the same time, Chris Evans' cap has become one of the cornerstones of the Marvel Universe. But people seem to forget that this wasn't really always the case, at least in the movies. Back when the MCU was just ramping up, there was some serious doubt that a movie could take a character that was perceived to be really stiff and hokey, like Captain America, and make him work with modern audiences. And then they did. In fact, they made it look pretty easy. Because here's the secret, I think, to adapting these older characters that could be perceived as too corny to work now. Actually like them. Don't condescend to the character and think you're above the material, like the guys behind the 1990 Captain America did. Don't make them something they're not, like the 2015 Fantastic Four. And definitely don't undercut the core of your hero in the name of making him edgy and murdery. Find what made people respond to this character in the first place and try to bring that to the surface. This is a good strategy that I think has worked wonders for both Cap and Wonder Woman. To make a good Superman movie, you need to like Superman. At the very least, it couldn't hurt. Now you'll tell me why Superman peanut butter tastes so great. Never. So fresh roasted, so clean. Now this is hardly the most original point ever, but one thing that I've always appreciated about Superman is that he doesn't need a life-defining tragedy or massive guilt complex to become a superhero. He becomes a superhero because it's the right thing to do. This simple decency, handed down not from some mystical order or ancient prophecy, but from his kind-hearted Kansas parents, is really refreshing in an age of ultra-tortured heroes and glib assholes. No offense to Batman or Deadpool, I like them too. But this is one part of Superman that modern interpretations of the characters just can't wait to chuck out the window. I don't want to get too bogged down in bagging on Man of Steel. There is stuff I like about it, especially the score. But I don't think any Superman movie has betrayed the character as much as the scene where Jonathan Kent tells his teenage son that leaving his classmates to drown on a bus may have been the right idea. Superman 3 may have been a goofy slapstick comedy and Superman 4 a bizarre mess but they never warped what made Superman Superman like this scene did. In Man of Steel, Superman becomes a hero because his dead dad who lives in a spaceship wants him to. The movie has far less interest in the Kents, giving Jonathan one of the most laughable death scenes imaginable. And that's just a terrible idea in my opinion, because having Jor-El overshadow the Kents makes Clark a lot less interesting and a lot less human. One criticism of Superman that I might agree with sometimes is that he's overpowered. It's not the big blue guy's fault, really. He didn't start out that way. 
In fact, in the 30s, he couldn't even fly, let alone shoot lasers out of his eyes. But throw in the radio show and the over-the-top ridiculousness that was the Golden Age, and he came out of the other side pretty overstocked in the superpowers department. There's ways to get around that. Maybe the next version of Superman could de-emphasize his more extreme powers, stuff like that. But honestly, with a good script, I don't think that's much of a problem. Just look at one of the best stories that the character has starred in, All-Star Superman. In it, Superman doesn't do a ton of fighting, because the writers have created a compelling plot that he can't just punch his way out of. Well okay, that might be an exaggeration, because there is still some pretty great action in the story, but it's definitely not the main focus. No, the focus remains firmly on Clark and the supporting characters, whether that means talking a teenage girl out of suicide or solving Lex Luthor's riddles. This is something that a lot of my favorite Superman Superman stories have in common. The kind of melancholy and thoughtful Superman for all seasons is another great example, focusing much more on Clark's relationships with his friends and family in Smallville than on battling aliens. Now not that there's anything wrong with battling aliens, the DC Universe has some pretty cool ones to fight, but I think they need to focus on grounding the character before giving us that kind of stuff. I'm not the biggest fan of the CW Supergirl. I think the writing on it is pretty not great. But one thing I do appreciate is it's Superman. Because when I look at him, I go, oh hey look, it's Superman. That probably sounds dumb, but honestly it doesn't happen that much lately. Man of Steel and BVS gave me a Superman filled with no joy and a lot of anger, one I didn't recognize. Justice League had a half-hearted attempt to add some old school Superman in reshoots that just felt pretty flat. So yeah, it's cool that at least on the CW, Superman is flying around making no apologies for being his gloriously uncynical self. It's not perfect, but it's a step in the right direction. At the end of the day, Superman represents the uncomplicated desire to do good for good's sake. And I understand that's easy to make fun of and to parody. Anything as earnest as Superman is. It's not dark and it's not cool. Like, you know, Hot Topic probably isn't going to start selling out of edgy Superman t-shirts anytime soon. I get all that. But I really do think that all it would take for a new Superman movie to be something special is to hire a writer and director that actually has some respect for that idea. Someone who doesn't think the core ideal of Superman is lame and needs to be turned on its head to be relevant to modern audiences. Call me corny if you want, but I still want to believe in the man of tomorrow. Here's a special tip for the fellas and girls who have not already joined Captain Midnight's new 1940 Flight Patrol. You'd better hurry up and join at once, because there's a big adventure ahead. The thing to do now is to get started, because we're going to have not only barrels of fun, but loads of free gifts and prizes.